What is going on guys? Head coaching makes all the difference in the NFL. Look at the Patriots, Saints, Seahawks, Ravens, and Steelers. Five great organizations who have kept the same head coach all these years. Then look at annual train wrecks like the Jets, Browns, Jaguars, and Lions. They're finding new head coaches seemingly every two years. Well, the good news for some of these teams is that they actually have a great offensive or defensive coordinator. One that's even more qualified than their head coach. And if the time comes to fire their head coach, these clubs can look at promoting their wonderful assistants in their place. So here's a look at 10 teams with an assistant coach that's actually better than their head coach. Make sure to subscribe to TPS, put on your notifications too, because we post videos all the time. New videos all the time, subscribe. Number 10, Houston Texans. We don't want to take too much away from Bill O'Brien. He is one of the few assistants from Bill Belichick's coaching tree to have some success as a head coach. But I mean, the Texans were pretty good under Gary Kubiak for a couple of years before O'Brien became head coach in 2014. Through the 2018 season, O'Brien had only led the Texans to one playoff win. They were lucky to play in a terrible AFC South division in the early years of O'Brien's coaching days. The Texans would be nowhere right now if it weren't for Deshaun Watson. O'Brien wasn't able to make anything work with his old quarterbacks. Brian Fitzpatrick, Brian Mallett, Brian Hoyer, Tom Savage, Brock Osweiler, you name it. Watson has made O'Brien look better as a head coach than he really is. Texas offensive coordinator Romeo Cronell deserves a ton of credit for keeping the Texans relevant. He joined the defensive coaching staff in 2016, holding the DC role from 2014 to 16 before regaining the role in 2018. Houston's defense ranked third under him in 2015 and first in 2016. They won the AFC South division in both years. And of course, he has five Super Bowl champions on his resume, including three as defensive coordinator of the Patriots from 2001 to 03. We'll say he and O'Brien work well together. The former has more experience and a much longer winning history. That's why we like him more as a coach than O'Brien. Number nine, Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have never advanced to the NFC Championship game under head coach Jason Garrett, but owner Jerry Jones just can't bring himself to firing Garrett. Garrett took over as head coach in 2010, replacing the fired Wade Phillips, and he led Dallas to a 5-3 finish. Garrett has kept the job ever since, which is amazing when you consider how mediocre they've been for the most part. Throughout the 2018 season, Dallas only had three playoff berths, two postseason victories, and four winning seasons under Garrett. And yet Jones continues to maintain that the clapping guru is going to lead them to a Super Bowl someday. But we'd argue that defensive coordinator Rod Marinelli is a better coach than Garrett. The latter was on staff for the 2002 Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl championship team as an assistant head coach and defensive line coach. Marinelli joined Dallas in 2013, and he was promoted to defensive coordinator in 2014. Keep in mind, Dallas didn't make the playoffs with Garrett until Marinelli arrived. Marinelli took over a horrible Cowboys defense in 2013, and they've been a middle of the pack to elite unit every year under his watch. They finished top 10 in scoring defense in the 2016 and 2018 seasons. Is it a stretch to say that Marinelli has bailed out Garrett since his arrival? I not really think so. Number eight, Jacksonville Jaguars. Head coach Doug Marone left the Buffalo Bills after just two years on the job, despite leading them to a nine win season in the 2014 campaign. He joined the Jacksonville Jaguars coaching staff in 2015 and became interim head coach in 2016. And Marone has since retained the role. But aside from a 10 win season and a trip to the 2017 AFC title game, Marone's tenure as a head coach hasn't been all that inspiring. The team crumbled and won just five games in 2018, finishing last in the AFC South. It's just that we believe the Jaguars defensive coordinator, Todd Wash, is a better coach than Marone. He joined the team in 2013 and has held the DC role since 2016. Jacksonville finished second in scoring defense in 2017 and fourth in 2018. Todd has built up one of the game's most ferocious defensive units, which anchors a scary front seven and a lockdown secondary. He really does a lot to help Marone look better as a coach than he really is. If anything, he deserves his shot as Jaguars head coach. I bet he'd fare better than Marone in that position. I'm just saying. Number seven, New York Jets. You can't ignore Adam Gase's success as an offensive coordinator. He was calling the shots with Peyton Manning during the Denver Broncos' historic 2013 season, when they set a record with 606 points scored. Gase also managed to pull out some gutsy wins as head coach of the Miami Dolphins, getting them to the playoffs in 2016 with backup quarterback Matt Moore. But as a head coach, it's been lackluster for Gase, to say the least. The man won 23 and 25 in three seasons as Miami's head coach. And of course, Gase's 2019 season with the Jets has been an absolute disaster. 
The Bounty Gate scandal aside, Jets defensive coordinator Greg Williams simply has more qualifications to be a head coach than Gase. He was the New Orleans Saints defensive coordinator when they won Super Bowl 44. Williams also led the Cleveland Browns to a 5-3 finish in 2018 after he took over for fired Hugh Jackson, but the team curiously chose to not retain him. Obviously replacing Williams with Freddie Kitchens has been the wrong choice in Cleveland. We are not here to endorse Williams as the Jets next head coach, but his experience and track record speaks for itself. He's a better coach than Gase, who will likely go back to being an assistant coach once his time with the Jets concludes. Number 6, Chicago Bears There was a time when Matt Nagy looked like a great head coach. Nagy was the Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator for two years, and he helped Alex Smith enjoy a career year in 2017. That helped Nagy land the Bears head coaching job in 2018. Chicago won 12 games on the basis of an elite smothering defense led by Khalil Mack. Of course, then defensive coordinator Vic Fangio deserves most of the credit, and he seems to have gotten it, as that impressive showing by Chicago's D led him to becoming head coach of the Denver Broncos in 2019. While the Bears have struggled here in 2019, and the offense led by struggling quarterback Mitch Trubisky is the key reason why. Nagy simply isn't able to get much out of the number two pick from 2017. At this point, the Bears might want to think about naming Fangio's replacement, Chuck Pagano. He could be their new head coach. Pagano's tenure with the Indianapolis Colts ended on a sour note, but let's remember his first three seasons as their head coach. A trio of 11 win seasons, two AFC South Division titles, and a trip to the 2014 AFC Championship game. Pagano went 50 53 and 43 as head coach of Indianapolis. And let's not forget that Andrew Luck was injured for a significant portion of that time. Pagano turned a two-win Colts team from 2011 into a Super Bowl contender. And hey, he did a fine job developing Andrew Luck right from his rookie season. Maybe he'd have more success than Nagy at developing Trubisky. Number five, Detroit Lions. Nobody needs to be reminded about how poorly Bill Belichick's assistants have fared as head coaches. But when the Detroit Lions hired Matt Patricia in 2018, it totally felt like a coup. Patricia joined the Patriots as an offensive assistant in 2004, and he was named defensive coordinator in 2012. Patricia won three Super Bowl rings in New England, including two as their DC. But my God, the GM Bob Quinn ever screw up once again by trying to bring the Patriots culture over to the Lions locker room. And of course, that was by hiring Patricia. Detroit went 6-10 and ten in his first season as head coach in 2018, and 2019 hasn't been much better. Keep in mind, the Lions recorded three winning seasons in four years under head coach Jim Caldwell, including two playoff berths. Lions offensive coordinator coordinator Dara Bovell is unquestionably a better coach than Patricia, who simply looks like a product of Belichick and the Patriots system. No assistant coaches seem to fail in Foxborough after all, but the many of them do struggle when they leave. Bovell was quarterbacks coaching Green Bay during the Brett Favre years, and he was the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks from 2011 to 17. He helped Russell Wilson develop into a Pro Bowl quarterback, and Bovell was there for their Super Bowl 47 championship season. Just look at how much better Matt Stafford has looked in 2019 under Bovell, especially compared to last year. Come on, the guy is clearly more fit to be a head coach than Patricia. Number four, Tennessee Titans. Mike Vrabel won three Super Bowls with the New England Patriots during their first dynasty. He joined the Houston Texans coaching staff in 2016 and was promoted to defensive coordinator in 2017. Vrabel then became head coach of the Tennessee Titans in 2018. They finished with nine wins in his first year at the helm, just barely missing the playoffs. However, the Titans have continued to be a mediocre football team in 2019. The Titans can run the ball well, and their defense is a top-tier unit, but Vrabel couldn't get any anything out of Marcus Mariota. The offense has been a downright mess under Vrabel. The Titans' dominant defensive play can be credited to the defensive coordinator, Dean Pease, who has a reputation as one of the game's smartest defensive coaches. This man won Super Bowl rings with both the Patriots and Ravens after all. This isn't to say Vrabel is a horrible coach, but Pease is simply a defensive mastermind who deserves his shot at becoming head coach. Vrabel's Titans are mediocre, and they'd be awful if Pease hadn't formed such a great defense. Number three, New York Giants. Pat Shermer had a failed two-year run as head coach of the Browns from 2011 to 12. He had a great season with the Minnesota Vikings as their offensive coordinator in 2017, using career journeyman Case Keenum to help them reach the NFC Championship game. That landed Shermer another head coaching gig, this time with the New York Giants in 2018. But his latest gig has been a complete disaster. The offense has been a mess under Shermer, and the defense is downright awful. We're stronger on Giants offensive coordinator and QB's coach Mike Shula, who joined the team in 2018. He previously served as OC of the Carolina Panthers, helping Cam Newton develop into an MVP quarterback 
quarterback who guided the team to a Super Bowl 50 appearance. The son of legendary head coach and Pro Football Hall of Famer Don Shula has a nice track record of success with numerous teams. Shula also fared well as the Jaguars offensive coordinator, helping them reach the 2007 AFC Divisional Round. Shula may never become a head coach, but we'd hire him before Shermer. The latter is simply better off as an offensive coordinator, nothing else. Number two, Atlanta Falcons. Dan Quinn led Atlanta to a Super Bowl 51 appearance and an NFC Wild Card spot in 2017. There was a time when he looked like the ideal head coaching hire. Prior to joining Atlanta, Quinn was defensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks, leading them to a Super Bowl 48 championship and another appearance in Super Bowl 49. But Quinn simply hasn't worked out with the Falcons over these last two years. 2019 marks another disappointing season in Atlanta. The club simply hasn't been able to rebound from their gut-wrenching Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. It's long overdue for the Falcons to cut ties with Quinn at this point. On the bright side, Matt Ryan is playing like his 2016 MVP self under offensive coordinator Dirk Coder, who rejoined the organization in 2019 after spending four years with the Bucks. Coder's tenure as head coach of Tampa Bay didn't go well, but Ryan at least looks as good as ever. Don't forget Coder was also the Falcons OC from 2012 to 14. Atlanta reached the NFC Championship game in 2012, thanks in large part to that Coder-led offense. Ryan is comfortable with Coder calling the shots, and Atlanta's offense remains a juggernaut. That is why the Falcons ought to consider giving Coder a head coaching opportunity, especially once they can Quinn. Number one, Cleveland Browns. Why are the Browns number one? It's not exactly because defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes should be a head coach. It's more so that Freddie Kitchen should have never been given this opportunity as the head coach. Kitchens joined Cleveland's offensive staff in 2018, and he was promoted to offensive coordinator midway through the year after Todd Haley and Hugh Jackson were fired. Rookie Baker Mayfield performed well under Kitchens in the second half. So the latter was named their head coach in 2019. And this was despite Kitchens having zero head coaching experience and very little offensive coordinator experience in the NFL. Sure enough, the Browns have become a bigger disaster than ever under Kitchens in 2019. Mayfield has regressed big time. And so much for Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. forming the next dominant receiver duo. Hate to be harsh, but Kitchens is probably the worst coach in the NFL right now as well as the most unqualified. Now, Wilkes' 2018 season as head coach of the Arizona Cardinals was a mess. He was fired after one season, with the team posting a 3-13 record. But few coaches have done anything with such a flawed roster, so don't go blaming Wilkes too much. He's had great success as defensive coach of the Chicago Bears, as well as the San Diego Chargers and the Carolina Panthers. Those teams featured great defenses when Wilkes was on staff. He was key in helping Chicago and Carolina reach Super Bowls 41 and 50 respectively. Wilkes, without a doubt, deserves a head coaching gig more than Kitchens. The latter should have retained his offensive coordinator role. He should have never been named the head coach. As for Wilkes, he may never get a head coaching job again, but his track record suggests he'd do better than Kitchens if it ever did happen. What other NFL teams have better assistant head coaches than their head coach? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Uh, yeah, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, follow me on TikTok. You know, you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, make sure to like this video because it really helps us out. And honestly, that would make me feel really happy if you guys liked it. Let's get this video to like 2,000 likes. Actually, no, 3,000, because you know why? Why not? Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. So put your notifications on and uh, do that thing. Yeah, thanks. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knees.